Hey guys, Kelvin here. A few days ago, I reviewed my entire Singapore portfolio. And in this video, I will be also reviewing my entire index fund portfolio. As for why I have two different portfolios was that they have totally different rules of investing, different philosophies, and different markets. That's why I felt that it was appropriate to separate them out. In this video, I will be sharing with you how this portfolio came to be, the rules of this portfolio, the goals of this portfolio, how I choose my stocks, and finally, I will be revealing the entire portfolio itself. First up, the history of this portfolio. I had been investing in my Singapore dividend portfolio for about two years. So a few months ago, I was comparing the performance of my Singapore portfolio to the performance of S&P index. And you know what? To my surprise, my Singapore dividend portfolio actually performed more or less equal to the S&P index. This is despite the fact that I spent so much time finding the best dividend stocks, keeping up to date with the latest news, and constantly monitoring the price so that I can enter at the best price possible for every month. And here comes along the S&P 500 index fund, which doesn't require you to spend time studying the stocks, keeping up to date with the latest news, and constantly monitoring the stock price. And on top of it all, it is already diversified by itself. In short, a simple index fund outperformed my dividend portfolio in every aspect possible. It kind of reminds me of their classmate, who doesn't come for classes, doesn't do his homeworks, and play video games all day long. While for me, I attend all my classes, hand in all my homeworks, and attend tuitions all day long. And yet, his exam results, he still managed to be better than mine. Until now, I still don't know how he managed to do that every single time. But anyway, I started looking into index fund and adding it into my portfolio. The number one rule of this portfolio is that I must never spend more than 24 hours a year to manage this portfolio. The simple reason is that the philosophy of an index fund is much different from the philosophy of a stock. When you buy a stock, you are betting that one single company will do well in the future. But when you buy into an index fund, you are not just betting into 10 companies or 20 companies. You are betting that that entire market will do well in the future. Take for example, the S&P 500. When you buy into it, you are betting that United States as a whole will do well in the future. Or when you buy into a global index fund, you are betting that the entire economy of the world will do well in the future. But you may ask, what if World War III happen? Or what if an asteroid comes crashing into Earth and wipes out half of the world's population? Well, when that happens, selling and buying stocks is the least of your worries you might be more interested in collecting tissue paper instead. Jokes aside, over the past 100 years, the market has seen so much problems like World War I, World War II, Cold War, and even now, the virus that is threatening the world to go into a global recession. And yet, every single time, the market has shown that it has come out on top. On top of that, it has managed to deliver a stunning 8-10% to growth on average for the past 100 years. To summarize, the reason I do not have to manage this index fund portfolio is that it self manages itself. Next up, the goal of this portfolio. This portfolio must be able to free up my time from managing stocks so that I can spend my time where it matters the most, like spending time with my loved ones, doing more side projects, and spending time to tap the like button to help with my channel. How do I choose the index funds for this portfolio? There are many strategies out there, but among them all, there is one very popular, simple, yet effective strategy called the three fund portfolio strategy. Basically, what the three fund portfolio strategy is that it buys into three highly uncorrelated funds. First, a local fund where it owns all the local stocks. Next, a global fund where it owns stocks globally. And third, a bond fund. Yes, it is what you think. It is bond. Bond fund. Just kidding. It's just a fund where it owns bonds. However, I've modified this three fund portfolio strategy a little to suit my needs. Let me show you. Let's talk about the local fund first. I live in Singapore and the local fund would be the STI ETF. However, in my opinion, the holdings in STI ETF 
are extremely biased towards larger companies like the telcos and the banks. Just a few of them have already taken up almost 50% of the entire index. And the other thing is, I personally believe that Singapore ETF will not be able to outperform the United States ETF like the S&P 500. And that's why I chose not to invest in the local fund. And as for the bond fund, in Singapore, we already have the CPF. And that by itself already acts as a bond fund. The CPF is like the United States version of the 401k. However, in Singapore, it's a mandatory contribution in which the employers contribute a 17% and the employees contribute a 20%. And after that, you earn a steady interest of 3 to 5% annually. However, you are unable to touch it until you reach retirement age. So in essence, the CPF is already a bond fund because after retirement, it's able to pay you out every month while generating a fixed interest like a bond. So with the local fund and the bond fund out of the way, that just leaves me with the global fund. But before I review my portfolio, help me to tap the like button to support the channel. And if you are new here, subscribe to me as I will be posting new videos every single week. Without further ado, here's my portfolio. For the global fund, I actually split it into two halves. One is the developed market at the US and the other is for the emerging market like China. The reason I split it into two funds was because I wanted to have more control on my exposure, whether to be more exposed to the developed market or the emerging market. For the developed market, I have the IWDA. This fund gives me a broad exposure to a wide range of global companies within 23 developed countries. The reason I chose IWDA is because it is an accumulating fund. In other words, it reinvests its dividends rather than paying out to its investors. And the other reason is that I'm just plain lazy. I do not want to manage the dividends as much as possible. The other benefit of RWDA is that it's domiciled out in Ireland. What's that you ask? Well, normally, if a non-US person invests in a US stock, he or she will have to pay 30% withholding tax. But when I invest in an Ireland domiciled out fund, rather than having to pay 30% tax, now I only have to pay half, 15%. The other benefit of IWDA is that it has a super low expense ratio of 0.2%, which, when you compare it to a mutual fund, is extremely low. Next, for the emerging market, I have the EIMI. This fund gives me exposure to over 2,800 large, mid, and small cap companies from emerging markets. Same like IWDA, EIMI is also an accumulating fund in which it reinvests its dividends and its expense ratio is about 0.18%. So that sums up my global fund. And recently, I was introduced to another fund by a group friend of mine, SSLK, a technology fund. I believe this fund will do well in the future because personally, I'm in the technology sector myself. And as the world progresses on, technology will become more and more relevant in the future. From the moment we wake up, traveling to work, work itself, buying food, buying grocery, everything is already tightly linked to technology. Same as the other funds, SSLK is domiciled in Ireland, reinvests its dividends, and it has an expense ratio of 0.15%. That sums up my entire index fund portfolio. Now, my portfolio has been destroyed by the recent crash. It is almost at 10-20% to loss. However, I'm not worried, but instead, I'm glad because this presents me with a unique buying opportunity. Remember the advertisement where Ronaldo goes tap 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 on the phone because it's discount time? Yeah, it is that discount time. Personally, I'm not worried about this crash because the market has shown that time and time again, it has overcome all kinds of crashes and break all time highs all over again. If my guess is correct, even though this portfolio requires significantly lesser amount of time to manage than my dividend portfolio, this portfolio will outperform my dividend portfolio. However, this index fund portfolio comes with a risk because it reinvests its dividends. It doesn't pay me anything. I will need to sell off its stocks to fund my expense. So the danger is, what if right before I retire or during retirement, the 2020 crash happened all over again? I will have to cut my expense and eat cup noodles while waiting for the market to recover. To reduce my risk, when I'm nearing retirement age, I will need to gradually convert my accumulating index funds 
to dividend paying index funds. This is so that I'm more reliant on the dividend payout of the fund rather than on the price of the fund itself to pay for my expense. So that wraps up my index fund portfolio for today. I'll be posting more updates about this portfolio from time to time. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of this portfolio. Is it good or is it bad? Or how can I improve on this portfolio? Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday. See ya!